It wasn't that long ago that electric vehicles were seen as a niche segment of the automobile market, more of a status symbol than a real competitor to traditional petrol-powered vehicles. But that's starting to change now and fast. A combination of factors is also driving this shift. We've got low cost and better technology, rising crude oil prices, and a serious global push to curb carbon emissions. Now, these factors are not only boosting the growth of the electric vehicle sector globally, but also right here in our own country. And of course, as investors, when we see a big theme like this playing out, our natural instinct is to look at which companies are best positioned to capitalize on this opportunity. So in this video, we're going to dive into the major players in the EV industry. We'll explore how the EV market is expanding, the challenges that still needs to be addressed, and most importantly, how you as an investor can strategically play the EV theme. Let's begin. You're watching Informed Investor, initiated by Equentis. So let's talk about the shift towards electric vehicles in India. Now, the Indian government has set some pretty ambitious targets. By 2030, they want EVs to account for 30% of private cars, 70% of commercial cars, 40% of buses, and a staggering 80% of two- and three-wheelers. Now, the electric vehicle industry has undergone a significant transformation over the last decade. When we look at India, there's still a considerable gap in EV penetration compared to larger global markets. Currently, EV penetration in India is just 6.8%. Now, that's a number that needs to be addressed if we are serious about transitioning to a cleaner future. But why is that? What are the roadblocks we are facing? Now, one major hurdle is the lack of robust charging infrastructure. Now, in simple terms, charging infrastructure refers to the network of EV charging stations and battery swap stations that we need to refuel our electric vehicles reliably while on the road. Unfortunately, in India, there's a significant gap here and it's holding back widespread adoption of EVs. Now think about it. If you compare the ease of finding a petrol station to finding a charging station, there's a noticeable difference. Now petrol stations are everywhere, but charging station, not so much. Now this scarcity is a major barrier and until it's addressed, we're going to see slow growth in EV adoption. Now let's talk about something even more fundamental, power supply. Now, for a switch to electric vehicles, our country needs to ensure consistent power supply. But in reality, we face power shortages, especially in villages, smaller towns, and even major metros where breakdowns can last for hours. Now, this is especially concerning in the summer months when power demand is at its peak. Then there's the issue of charging time. Now, filling up a petrol or a diesel car takes just a few minutes, but charging an EV at home, that can take anywhere from six to eight hours. Now, even with fast chargers and bigger batteries, you're looking at 30 to 60 minutes to get an 80% charge. Now, that's a significant difference in convenience. And finally, we can't ignore the high upfront cost. While EVs may save you money in the long run, the initial investment is steep, which can be deterrent for many price-conscious buyers like Indians. Now, despite the challenges we just discussed, we are also seeing EV gain momentum in the country. This year, we've seen a remarkable surge in EV sales, jumping over 41%, despite some challenges like subsidy cuts and changes in regulations. Now, to put it in perspective, total EV registrations this financial year crossed the 1.6 million mark, a significant leap from the 1.1 million registrations we saw in fiscal year 23. Now, the surge has driven overall EV penetration in India up to 6.8% from 5.3% last year. Now, electric two-wheelers make up about 60% of the overall EV sales and showing how popular they've become. Although passenger cars still have the lowest penetration rates, it's worth noting that their penetration has doubled from 1.3% to 2.3% in fiscal 24. So yes, while India's EV games does face hurdles, we are making strides in adopting a cleaner future. Now, this has also happened due to many policies. Take, for example, the FAME schemes, which collectively have an outlay of 10,000 crore rupees. Now, these schemes are designed to accelerate EV adoption by providing incentives and subsidies for both manufacturers and buyers. Now, there's already a buzz about the potential launch of FAME 3. Now, if this happens, it could provide an even bigger push for the EV sector. Next, the production link incentive scheme for advanced auto technology and advanced chemical cells, which is another big move. The government has allocated about 44,000 crore rupees here with an overall investment commitment that exceeds 1.2 lakh crore rupees. Now, this is expected to be a game changer for boosting local manufacturing of EV components and batteries. Now, they've also extended the custom duty exemption on importing capital goods and machinery needed to manufacture 
lithium ion cells for EV batteries. Now this step again is crucial for bringing down cost and encouraging local production. Now on the tax front, there's been a significant reduction in GST from 12% to 5% on EVs from, and from 18% to 5% on charging stations and chargers, which makes EVs more comfortable for consumers and also sets the stage for mass adoption. Now, battery swapping is another interesting initiative that's gaining traction. It addresses the concerns around charging time and battery longevity, making EVs more convenient for users. Now, oil marketing companies have also announced plans to set up 22,000 EV charging stations across the country. This is critical infrastructure that will support the EV ecosystem as it expands. So yes, as much as there are hurdles, several initiatives have been undertaken to increase the adoption in the country. On the back of this, the Indian EV market is forecasted to expand 66% annually to $113.99 billion by 2029. Now with the staggering growth, the normal question is, how do you play the EV game? Let's get into this. Now, when we talk about playing the electric vehicle game, we're looking at an entire ecosystem that's transforming not just transportation, but also the way we invest. Now, for every investor, whether you're a seasoned or someone just getting started, understanding the EV game can offer some compelling opportunities. Now, the EV ecosystem is vast and it's essential to recognize that the growth of electric vehicles isn't just about cars themselves, but about every stage that brings the EV to the market and beyond. It's a process that starts right from the ground, literally. First, we have raw material extraction. This is where we get essential elements like lithium, cobalt, nickel, and other materials that are critical for building EVs. Now, during processing, these raw materials are refined and prepared for the next big step, manufacturing. The processed materials are then used to provide various components of the vehicle. We're talking about everything from an electric motor, and transmission to the batteries, to electronics, to the braking system, to the structural components, and even the wheels and tires. Now, each of these parts play a crucial role in how the vehicle operates. Now, after manufacturing, it's time for the final assembly. This is where all these individual components come together to form the EV that we see on the roads. So when we talk about companies in the EV space, we can classify them as upstream, midstream, and downstream. Now, upstream includes the companies involved in the extraction and processing of raw materials like lithium, cobalt, nickel, which are crucial for battery production. Now, investing in these companies means you're betting on the increasing demand for these materials as EV production ramps up globally and domestically. Now, in midstream, we are looking at companies involved in the development and manufacturing of battery components, EV technology, and automation systems. Now, these businesses are at the heart of EV revolution focusing on innovation that improves battery efficiencies, reduces cost, and enhances vehicle performance. Now, this segment also includes companies producing the software and hardware that drive autonomous and connected vehicle technologies. For example, Amara Raj Energy and Mobility Limited is involved in battery manufacturing and energy store distribution. Now, so is Excite Industry Limited, which is one of the leading manufacturers of battery. Then you have KPIT Technologies, which provides software solutions for autonomous and connected vehicle technologies. Now, LNT Technology Services and Tata Technologies also offer engineering services for EV and hybrid vehicles. Finally, the downstream sector involves the auto manufacturers themselves, including both legacy automakers transitioning to EVs and new companies solely focused on electric vehicles. Now, this is the most obvious choice for investors who want to play the EV opportunity. Now, automobile companies which are manufacturing EVs are in the two, three, and four-wheeler segments. Now, the four-wheeler segment includes Tata Motors, while the two- and three-wheeler segments have TVS Motors, Bajaj Auto, Hero Motor Corp, among others. Now, another way to play the electric vehicle game is to invest in the nifty EV new age and automotive index. Now, this index is designed to track the performance of companies that are actively involved in the EV or new age automotive vehicle segment. Now, this index provides exposure to a diversified range of companies within the auto and related segments, ensuring that the investment is spread across various aspects of the EV and new age automotive industry. Now, this index selects 33 stocks from Nifty 500 index. These companies must be engaged in the production and supply of electric or new age automotive vehicles, batteries, components, raw materials and technologies. Now, this ensures that the index captures a broad spectrum of businesses contributing to the EV ecosystem. Now, among the sector, automobile and auto components have the highest weightage in the index, followed by information technology, chemicals, etc. 
And when it comes to companies, Tata Motors has the highest weightage, followed by other traditional OEMs like Maruti Suzuki, Bajaj Auto, Mahindra and Mahindra, etc. Now there are two stocks that we want to talk about that has performed exceptionally well. One is from the upstream, the other is from the downstream. The first stock we are going to talk about is a chemical company. Now, India's chemical companies are starting to venture into the electric vehicle battery value chain, which is essential for the future of EVs. Now, one of the companies leading this charge is Himadri Specialty Chemicals. If you see this chart, the company has given spectacular returns, growing more than 500% over the last five years. And over the last one year, it's gone up by a whopping 165%. Now, Himadri, founded in 1987, has built a strong reputation and manufacturing carbon materials and chemicals. Now, they're known for products like coal tar, pitch, carbon black, and specialty oils. But now, they're making a significant shift towards the lithium ion battery market, which is crucial for the growing EV industry. Now, as the automotive sector races to manufacture electric vehicles at low cost, the batteries, which represent the most expensive component, has become a focal point and they're also expected to grow at a CAGR of 33%. Now, one of the key materials in lithium-ion batteries is lithium-ion phosphate. Now, since these batteries are heavily used in electric vehicles, having a domestic supply chain for these components is a big deal. Now, in December 2023, Imadri announced a bold plan. They're investing 48 billion rupees over the next five to six years to set up a manufacturing facility dedicated to lithium-ion battery components. Now, Himadri plans to produce 200,000 tons of lithium ion phosphate that is expected to be operational by quarter three of fiscal year 27. In addition, Himadri also continues to invest in startups working on lithium ion electrode materials. Now, it has a 12.79% stake in the Australian startup Sikona, which is working on silicon based anode material. The company has also taken a 40% stake in a startup called Invati Creations, which is engineering lithium ion electrode materials for efficient energy storage. Himadri also aims to double their profits by fiscal year 27 through better margins, more sales, and value added products. They're also not planning to raise any additional debt or dilute equity in the near future. Instead, their focus is on projects that drive their return on capital employed to about mid 30s. So in a nutshell, Himadri is making strategic moves to become a key player in the EV battery market, positioning themselves to capitalize on the booming demand for electric vehicles. The next company we will talk about something all of us are aware of, which is Tata Motors. Now, this is a company that's built a solid reputation over the years for producing quality and reliable vehicles. This strong brand recognition has really worked in their favor, helping them attract a loyal customer base and maintain their position as one of the largest automakers out there. Now, if you focus on the electric vehicle space, Tata Motors is leading the charge quite literally. They're the biggest player in India's rapidly growing EV market. In fact, the EV unit of Tata Motors is now valued at over a billion dollars. And get this, three out of every four electric vehicles sold in India are made by Tata Motors. They've also achieved the highest market capitalization among all Indian automobile majors. When we talk about their product lineup, it's quite extensive. They offer everything from commercial vehicles to passenger cars and luxury vehicles like Jaguar Land Rover. And they've also recently made a strong push in the electric vehicle market. On top of that, they're also involved in vehicle financing through Tata Motors Finance. Now, Tata Motors is also the market leader in India's commercial vehicle segment and ranks among the top three in the passenger vehicle market. Now, let's dive into some numbers. Now, a significant chunk, around 71% of Tata Motors revenue, comes from the JLR segment. Commercial vehicles make up about 16.5% and passenger vehicles account for about 10%. The rest, which includes IT services, insurance, broking, vehicle financing, contributes around 1% of their revenues. Now, moving on to the electric vehicle story. Now, according to Wahan data from FADA, Tata Motors sold 64,217 electric cars in fiscal year 24, capturing a market share of 73%. That's slightly lo lower than the 83.9% share they had in fiscal year 23, which also shows that competition is catching up, but Tata Motors is still the leader by a wide margin. Now, looking ahead, Tata Motors is really banking on what they call three E's expansion, EV ecosystem, and EV channel to drive growth and electrify India. They have big plans to launch 10 EV models by fiscal year 26 as part of their mission to mainstream EVs in India. By fiscal year 30, they aim to launch 10 more models. 
Now, another interesting aspect of the strategy is creating synergy between their EVs and rooftop solar systems. Now, Tata Motors plans to cross-promote RTS and EVs to customers aiming to increase the percentage of Tata EV users with RTS from the current 10 to 15% to 50% by the end of the decade. Now, there's also something big on the horizon for the Tata Motors, the Dean merger plan. Currently, they operate in three segments, commercial vehicles, passenger vehicles, and Jaguar Land Rover. Now, with the Dean merger, the commercial vehicles business will become one entity, while the passenger vehicles, which includes PV, EV, and JLR, will form another. So why are they doing this? The core reason is value unlocking. This move will give each business more freedom to pursue its own growth plans quickly and efficiently. The press release also pointed out that while there aren't any overlaps between commercial vehicles and passenger vehicle segments, there are significant opportunities for synergy across PV, EV and JLR, especially in areas like EVs, self-driving cars and vehicle software. Now, this demerger is expected to help them capitalize on these opportunities. To sum it all up, Tata Motors is a company with a strong foundation, a global presence and a clear vision for the future, especially when it comes to electric vehicles. And they're definitely a key player to watch in the years ahead. Now, as we always say, while companies can capitalize on a booming theme such as EV, it is always important to look at valuations too. And if you want us to cover any EV stock, do let us know in the comment section. Having said that, this is me, Merlin, signing off. Take care and stay invested. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.